What's up everybody, Chris coming to you here from Salty Island Games and I want to say a big shout out to War Room Games. Thank you so much for helping me pre-order. What we've got here in front of you is the brand new Hexfire box. For anybody who's been following my channel for any length of time, you will know that Thousand Suns have been my main army since 3rd edition and with the release finally of the 9th edition codex, I am extremely hyped and my plan is pretty much every day this week I'm just going to talk a little bit about the Thousand Suns, my thoughts in 9th edition, we'll talk about the competitive side, we'll talk about the crusade side, I might even crack out the 3rd edition Chaos Space Marine, the 3.5, the legendary codex, do a little run through of where Thousand Suns were when I started versus where they are today and kind of take a whole recap of that whole thing. But first thing that I wanted to do, I am super excited, we have the new uh, Hexfire box, this is the two player box for 9th edition that contains Grey Knights and Thousand Suns and it is it is more expensive than the other ones. Uh, usually the two player boxes are 170. Uh, this one was 225 American. So it is it is not cheap by any means. But with that said, what it's got inside is two insane armies. Uh, it's got full full armies here. I actually haven't pointed them out yet. Um, we're actually going to do that here today, but we're going to unbox the Hexfire box, take a look and see what's inside, and see what you get for $225. So let's go ahead and pop this open. This is the first time I'm opening it. I pulled, just pulled the plastic off of it here. So obviously, awesome cover art on the box. We'll go ahead and set this on the side for a second here. Whoops, as I hit every device that I've got. All right, Sprue Hell. Well, this, this looks pretty familiar. Bases, yep, check. All right, what do we got here? We have, these are the accessory bits for the uh, Zangors. As you can see, there's Zangors on these sprues here. They're the chain swords and pistols. Um, I'm actually probably gonna make chain sword pistols Zangors because I have 30 uh, two weapon Zangors already because that's what I ran in uh, previous editions. But uh, I think, if I run them, I'm going to change it up a little bit. I used to run 30-man blobs because they were great. They, they took a bit of a point hit now, so their purpose is a little different. I think pistol chain swords might be the new way to go here. Here's another disc. You never have too many discs. All right, what we got here? This looks like the Grey Knight's half, right? We've got the baby carrier here on the Grey Knight. We're going to put this on the Grey Knight side. We have, ooh, this is the brand new character for Grey Knights. So, so here is the new sprue for the new character. And as you can see, it's got a little scenic base already. It's got really nice detail. Let's see if I can like, kind of like, oh, my camera is not going to autofocus. Let's see if I can like force focus my camera for you all here. I apologize. All right, there we go. Try to get you guys like a white background so you can see closer up here. There's some details of the new character sprue. He's got the demon sword. The demon sword is really nice. He's got the banner. There's the banner. It's got the artwork already on it. You can see the back side of the, the, the demon sword. That's real nice. I, I approve of that one. This, this is a pretty nice sprue. I'm looking forward to this character. Let's uh, set this on the side here. Oops. Actually, is this the other half to it? No, this is here's the here's the Thousand Suns uh, character half. So as you can see, he's also got a scenic base. I apologize if the audio keeps cutting in and out or fading in and out. I'm moving my head back and forth. Uh, Thousand Sun, you can see he's got some nice detail on the leg. That's really nice. Um, here we go, cloak. It's got like a oh no, it's a um, screamer. It's a little baby screamer. Nice. Got the backpack. The fancy Thousand Suns have these uh, like little pyres on the back of their backpack. His cloak is in two pieces. That's cool. A unique staff. Uh, that's really nice because all of my sorcerers in my Thousand Suns army use a different staff. So I, I'm super happy that they gave me a different staff. So I don't have to double up, keep on my trend. All right. That's, that's hella nice. I am very excited. This is pretty much the main thing that I don't have, but I can always use more of the other parts as well. Okay, there you go. 
uh, baby carrier sprue. Everybody knows and loves the Grey Knight baby carrier. Get that. Ooh. Big old Thousand Sun sprue with Terminators. I have many Terminators. I have 10 Terminators already, but, but I would not be sad to have more. Um, I also want my, my current Terminator loadouts all use the Soul Reaper cannon. I might actually build uh, multiples of the flamethrower, uh, the, the warp flamer, the heavy warp flamer. So that way I have the models to actually swap in and out. So I'll, I can use two five mans with Soul Reaper, two five mans with the heavy flamer, or, you know, kind of like a mix and match. That's that's actually pretty nice. Here we go. What do we got here on this sprue? This sprue is Grey Knights. I I personally do not have not built Grey Knights before, but this should be pretty fun. They're also real easy to paint, you know. Hit them with a the silver and then you give them a wash and then you kind of highlight and you call them a day cuz that's pretty much what Grey Knights are. I I actually might uh, paint them up as whatever the Grey Knight successor chapter is just to kind of change it up a bit. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. More Grey Knights. Just regular Grey Knight sprue. Alright, what we got here? Zangors. We got Zangors for days. I've got, I've built lots of these. I have like lots of extra Zangors. I don't know. I feel like I should play Age of Sigmar with my Zangors also, but I just can't quite get into them. They're, I think the theme is a little different. Another Zangor sprue. We got lots of Zangors. Here we go. At the bottom, we've got this. What is this here? We got this uh, very nice Warhammer 40,000, as the official wording goes. Ooh, and we have a little poster. This is very nice. This one, this one is special to me. I will probably actually frame this one because, you know, Thousand Suns be my love. Uh, this one is actually absolutely for me. A little dent, but I, I can manage that. All right, this is, I am super happy. This I've got a, quite a few of these from various boxes that we've had in the past, but Thousand Suns one, love. Uh, baby Carrier, all right. Uh, you have, ooh, this is a new Chaos Transfer Sheet, actually. This is different than the old one. I have not seen this one before, <clears throat> which is weird because it's, it's Thousand Suns and Grey Knights, so I don't know why you threw in a Chaos Transfer Sheet but with that said, that's cool because, as you know, we have an Iron Warriors army. Uh, we also have a unpainted Night Lords army. Um, I have an Alpha Legion army uh, that you've seen on camera. I could always use more Alpha Legion uh, decals. I am low-key building a Word Bearer army, which is pretty sweet. Oh, there, it's Thousand Suns. It's got the Thousand Suns on it also. And Black Legion. It's got some sigils and runes which is cool. It's got also teeny tiny. Uh, well, you can't really see it super well. Let me see if I can like, get this zoomed in and like focus the camera for y'all. Nope, and there's nothing that's going to make this one show up here. It's like this white text writing. And you can kind of see it. It's real faint. But All right, there we go. That's a, that's a sprue. And then we got this book. Hexfire book. Let's take a look at this Hexfire book here. Without knocking the camera over. All right. Instructions, right? I'm assuming these are instructions. Yes. Instructions. All the instructions you're going to need. Um, it's got the new style of instructions. Thank goodness. Bless these instructions. These are the ones that have the color coded. So depending on what you want, you just follow the instructions, right? And it gives you the highlighted pieces. They're like, hey, here are the pieces that are different. Uh, I'm glad they're doing instructions this way now. They're also doing it where, like, as you go step by step, they're like, hey, this is the new color piece that you're adding, and here's where it goes. See the yellow to the yellow? Makes it nice and easy. Bless you, GW, for figuring out how to make instructions. Pretty much what you expect in the box. Okay, here's the, here's the actual interesting book, right? This is the Hexfire book that comes inside of the box. So you can see on the back, it contains these two armies here. All right, so you have... Uh, Crow, you have 10 Grey Knights and a Baby Carrier. On the other side, you have the New Thousand Suns. Uh, it's, like, it's like a Chaplain Sorcerer, basically. 
He's got like chaplain-like abilities, but he also can cast psychic powers because Thousand Sons. You've got 10 Zangors, five Terminators, and one Zangor Shaman. Is it, is it what I would have done for a Thousand Sons box? Meh. Maybe. Um, I, I like it because it's different, right? It's not just Rubric Marines and Terminators and a Sorcerer. Uh, so I appreciate that it's more than 11 models. I definitely appreciate that. Is it the best loadout? Yeah, it, it, it's an okay loadout. It's, it's not a terrible loadout. Um, I am curious to see what the Combat Patrol box looks like. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Our right, introduction. Introduction. Uh, so Hexfire is a tale of lethal ambition and colliding destinies. As Magnus the Red's traitor legion reels from a surprise attack, new champions look to propel themselves into his service through brute force and guile. Among these aspirants is the infernal master Zentep Corazon, whose plans rest on the seizing of an infamous relic held by the Grey Knights. So this box is actually a full narrative. Uh, if you are into combat patrol, uh, narrative play, this is, this is pretty great. Uh, I, as you know, on this channel, we do a lot of narrative, a lot of combat patrol. So this box is pretty much everything that we want, and you will be seeing upcoming games for it. So it talks to the story about the Infernal Master, the new character. It's not a character. It's not a named character. Uh, it's the new HQ uh, type that Thousand Sons can take. But this particular one for the narrative is Zentep Corazon, which is really cool. And it talks about uh, some of the final of the sorcerers. I'm not going to go super into it, but I am just going to kind of uh, let this sit here for a second. You guys can read some nice artwork. Um, I think this is reused, but it's still very nice. Talks a bit about the narrative, a path to power, screams and whispers, you know, that usual Thousand Sun stuff. All right. Talks about the Grey Knights, Castell and Crow. He's not Drago. Uh, I was personally not gonna lie. I was hoping for a new Drago, but it, it's cool. Crow is Crow is cool. So talks about Zentep Corazon. Here he is in all his D bag glory because he's a thousand son. He, that's just what you are. I, I accept it into my heart as a son of uh, Magnus, follower of Armon. Talks about their stories here. Bloodshed and deceit. All right, so this I think this is the part where it goes into the narrative about what the, the deal with this battle is. Let's see if I can read this to help you guys out here. Fires raged on Soror Sororitas. Sororitas. Even as the ash and dust from the Imperial attack still fell from the skies, surviving Thousand Suns mobilized to seize advantage and met out retribution. The landscape itself heaved and morphed, while nightmarish demons cavorted amongst the ruins, preying on the remnants of the Space Marine raid. Into this turmoil stepped Zentep Corazon. So it seems like the narrative is the Grey Knights have taken the fight to the Thousand Suns and actually attacked uh, Sororitas, the planet of the sorcerers. So um, for those of you who are fairly new to the lore, at the end of 7th edition, 7th edition was when I believe the Thousand Suns, it was at the end of 6th or 7th, the Thousand Suns came back, and in their return to the game itself, um, and the return of Magnus the Red to the game and to the lore, he essentially made a giant attack on the Space Wolf system, the Space Wolf home planet of Fenris, and he destroyed it. Just, he just wrecked the Space Wolves. They got, they got destroyed. It was... It was one of my happiest moments as a 40k fanboy. And at the culmination of this attack, Magnus the Red essentially teleported the planet of the sorcerers from the Eye of Terror into real space um, and basically pulled it into real space next to the old homeworld of the Thousand Suns, Prospero. And so now the Thousand Suns homeworld, new homeworld, is back in. So there's a demon world essentially in real space. And this was one of the events that led up to the uh, basically the giant battle on Cadia and the whole uh, Great Rift and all of that. So th this is one of the events that kind of started 
the path uh, of that narrative. So this is super cool. Uh, so now that the planet of the sorcerers or Sorotus is in real space, the Great Knights look like they're attacking the planet, kind of uh, trying to put the Thousand Suns in their place to, if they can. But it, it's literally a demon world in, in real space. The whole world is is created at the will of Magnus. The the landscape is basically uh, is is basically a living magical planet that the the whole the landscape shifts and warps. And it attacks anybody that tries to invade it. There's demons. There's the Thousand Suns, obviously, in their full Legion strength. Um, as part of this this attack on the Space Wolf's homeworld, Magnus called out to all of the factions and all of the warbands of the Thousand Suns, gathered them back up onto the planet of the Sorcerers. He struck some dank deals with Armon and essentially... In exchange for the lore that Armand gathered about the webway, uh, agreed to be cool with Armand. And it was pretty easy. Like, Magnus was essentially, hey, we hate the Space Wolves. If you hate the Space Wolves, we're going to go raid the Space Wolves. And every Thousand Sun who's anybody is like, yeah, we hate the Space Wolves, so we're in on this. Um, what Magnus then did is he, he kind of, in, in, in infinite trickery and just as planned, uh, Killed all of the, uh, basically the rebellious, uh, exalted sorcerers that were leading the war bands, and gave their rubric marines to the exalted sorcerers who remained loyal to to Magnus. Um, really, one of the few that that made it through was Armon because Armon is Armon. You know, he's he 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 came into it knowing what was going on and was like, yeah, I, I've got reason for you not to do this and Magnus was like yeah you got a point for now and so there's um a tentative truce between them but not um so the thousand sons are now back essentially as a singular legion there are you know some splinter war bands that are not so you can narratively play them if that's what your lore was uh for your thousand sons army but I would say 95% of the Thousand Suns Legion is back to being a proper Legion. So they're no, in no small uh, show of strength right now. All right, so uh, the Grey Knights look to be taking offense to that and, and making an attack on the planet of the Sorcerers. So there's some narrative, uh, some great art, the Eight Thousand Suns, and the Grey Knights probably talks about the return or what Crow has been up to this whole time. That's very very cool. Uh, some art, uh, some pictures. All right, you got the baby carrier, the new crow. I like that there's a helmeted version. That is extremely cool for people who don't like to paint faces or thinks that commanders should just wear helmets, right? I agree. Um, you have your actual models there. They're purifiers with uh, the different weapon loadouts so you can see what they are. Here's the Thousand Sun side. The Zangor Shaman, Razak the Pilgrim. I think this is the one who's narratively uh, part of this, this faction here. And Zentep Corazon himself. You can see him in all his glory. I like the I like the little baby the baby screamers. Baby screamers are great. Then he's got his Terminators and he's got some Zangors. Zangors are essentially now um, Demon, demon cultists, I would say. They're basically cultists that have um, a five-up invuln save. They're pretty good. All right. Some more artwork. Uh, some pictures. Show that off there. Rules. That's, this is great. It's got Theater of War, Hexenfast. Theater of War offers a unique, exciting way to play. Okay, so it's like a... It's a... Basically like a... Like the Warzone, Caradon, and the other ones. It's got one specifically for this setting. It's Hexenfast. It's got two missions, which is pretty nice. Uh, the Thousand Suns Crusade, the Great Knights Crusade, and some data sheets. That's oh, it, they've got rules for Thousand Suns Crusade in here. That's also nice. I will have to go ahead and check later if these crusades are different than the ones inside of the Thousand Suns uh, New Codex which we'll get to that later on this week. All right, so if you want to play in the Hexenfast, it gives you all the like effects. So um, if you've looked at the 
previous two war zones that GW has released. So if you've looked at any of the White Dwarfs recently, GW has been going all in on narrative play, and I'm super hyped for that. I'm so happy. There's all different types of alternate battlefields, extra rules that you can have, and none of them are required, right? They're not even made for competitive play. But if you and your friends are just chilling and you want to do a narrative, this is, in addition to being a fantastic time for GW and competitive play, I will actually say that this is probably one of the best times that GW has ever supported narrative play as well. So I want to shout that out as a big thank you to GW. I hope you guys continue to do this. This is fantastic. Even though I know competitive play is where 90% of the content you see is, narrative, narrative play has its place in this current edition, and I'm super happy for that. You can see different atmospheric effects, mysterious objectives, special terrain rules that you, if you want to add in. You can make them random. You can just choose the ones you like. It's all here. Uh, people take a quick look at that. There's a mission. Arcane Ambush. All right. Uh, talks about the armies. Uh, it tells you specifically what factions to play, obviously from the box. This first one here is an ambush mission. You got Crow, two Purifier squad units, um, and then the Thousand Sons have one Zangor Shaman, what, one unit of Zangors, ten of them, and five Terminators. Okay, so this one has Crow, two squads, and it's, this one does not use the Baby Carrier. And this one, for the Thousand Sons, does not use the new HQ model. It uses the Zangor Shaman instead. And it gives you the how to deploy off here. Yeah, there we go. That might be a little bit easier for people. All right, and then there's the deployment zone. All right. And the second mission, Fates Collide, right? Obviously, you have the whole army, you use the whole box this time. Crow, two purifiers, and the Nemesis Dread Knight, AKA the Baby Carrier, and then the Thousand Sons have the Infernal Master, the Shaman, 10 Zangors, and five Terminators. And it's got the deployment zone. All right, and it's got the victory conditions and all of that. That's cool. That's cool. I approve. Uh, I'm not going to, like, don't spoil it, but they each have a different side of, of who wins the, the narrative, right? If the Grey Knights get the victory, you get, you get this narrative happens. If the Thousand Suns get the victory, this side happens. This is actually really cool. I don't think I've ever seen GW do this, um, at least not with any of the boxes that I've seen. I haven't bought them all recently, so... They may have been doing this recently, but for me, this is the first time I'm seeing it. Kudos to you, GW, for giving me both sides of the narrative. So, you know, depending on who wins, I can see what the outcome was. Grey Knight's Crusade. There we go. I'm a big fan of playing Crusade, as anybody knows. I'm going to help people out here. Let's see if... Uh, let's make sure that we get this in focus. All right, Grey Knight's Crusade. All right, battle traits, battle scars... There you go. Look at the lower half of that. And then on the other side, the Thousand Suns Crusade. All right, you got battle traits and battle scars. And you've also got some relics. Try to make sure it stays in focus. Sorry, I don't have my camera set to autofocus. I kind of hate when it does that. So. Trying my best to manually focus it in as best as I can. Um, let's see what we got here. Relic. A uh, Thousand Suns Relic. It's got an Artificer Relic and Tweer's Mimic. Model equipped with Four Sword only. The bearer has the following ability. Has an Aura. While an enemy model is within one of this model, each time an enemy model makes an attack, your opponent cannot re-roll the hit roll. Can so basically, the, your opponent cannot do re-rolls. Uh, Antoine's Mimic the Fluff after... Sensing the formidable presence of Antwer, the demonic entity bound within this weapon resolved to mimic the power of the Black Blade, corrupting the willpower of nearby foes. It's also got the Ritual Fragments, Psyker only, which is everyone in the Thousand Suns Army, so I, I guess, I guess you could specify that. Once per battle, after a Psychic Test is taken for this, you may add three to the Psychic Test. That's fantastic. That's an awesome relic. Um, narrative gives you some ridiculous relics. Uh, it's very cool. Um, 
as we get into round two of our battle reports, you're going to start seeing some of these more narrative type relics. I hope you guys enjoy that. And then the Magister Staff. It's a staff. Strength plus two, AP minus two, D3 damage. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, if a hit is scored, then the unit at the starting next command phase, the target is psychically stunned. Psychically stunned units cannot manifest psychic powers. That's pretty nice, especially because you're fighting great knights. Um, again, these are crusade relics, so these are not for competitive play. These are for the narrative type mode. And scars are obviously if the units die, you get, you take the scars as as the penalty for you know having your guys get killed. Um, Grey knights have them, and Thousand Suns have them also. Battle traits are obviously buffs you get, you know, from narratively speaking. Um, again, none of this is for competitive play, but it is very cool that they give these extra rules for narrative play, and I'm looking forward to using them. Data sheets, right? I mean, at this point, it's nothing we haven't seen already. The codexes are out. Um, you can find various reviews of the codex on different websites. Go ahead and take a look for that. But, I mean, if you don't, if for some reason you got the Hexfire box but couldn't get a codex because GW's releases are a little questionable. Um, what's nice is um, I, I wasn't able to get the Grey Knights codex. Um, I'll get it later, but not for now I have the rules inside of here so I can play Grey Knights even without their codex. Or I could just, you know, people doing a codex review can help us out. All right, got the got the sheets, got Castell and Crow. Let's see what Crow's stat line looks like. Castell and Crow. Got pretty good, pretty good. All right. Hopefully, hopefully that uh, helped a few people out deciding if you know you might want to look into buying Hexfire. Oops. Let's uh, fix my focus again. All right. Baby Carrier. Baby Carrier looks good. Purifier Squad looks good. So, interestingly, this book, uh, if I hadn't mentioned this already, or if it got cut off, we'll just kind of go through this again. Uh, this book actually contains the whole Grey Knights, uh, multiple Grey Knights data sheets for things that are not even in the box. All right. Like it's got the Grandmaster, it's got the Strike Squad, it's got Purifiers. I think it's because the kits that uh, are coming in this box make multiple kits. Like you can have the Grandmaster in the Nemesis Dread Knight or just the regular Nemesis Dread Knight. So whatever you choose to build it, GW put the data sheet inside of this box, which is super thoughtful and very nice. Um, it's not just like the box intended you to build the regular Nemesis, uh, not the Grandmaster Nemesis. So they didn't give you the Grandmaster Nemesis. No, so they gave you every version of the data sheet for whatever the units in the box could have built. So you've got the Strike Squad and the Purifier Squad and the Interceptor and the Purgation Squad. That's hella hype, actually. Um, I will now have to think about what we're going to be building uh, inside of this box. That's, that is extremely nice. Thank you, GW. There you go. In the wake of Magnus's failure, I will rise. As my brother's flail and disorder reigns, I will seize what is mine. With the knights in silver weak, I will strike. I uh, thank you, GW. Um, with the exception of the cost of the box at two twenty-five, which is more. But with that said, the contents of the box, I think people broke down the price, and it's about three hundred thirty-five dollars American worth of models so you still get um like a hundred and ten dollar discount which is a 33 percent off uh it's still a great value if you do not own any of these armies already and you and your buddy wanted to chop a box you're essentially getting about like 150 to 170 dollars of models each for the equivalent of paying 125 dollars right so you're saving 50 bucks each and getting a reasonable starting point on the army. I think the Great Knights one is pretty pretty much what you're going to get. Like you need one of those, you need 10 of those guys, right? That kit seems to make everything, so you you may as well just get it. The the Dread Knight, the Nemesis Dread Knight is pretty much a Great Knight staple, obviously. Crow is your new hotness character. 
He's probably amazing. Should probably take him. So the Grey Knight side, I think, is, is fantastic. The Thousand Sun side is okay, right? Um, Zangors are a cheap troop. I do think they're better than cult, regular cultists. Um, having the Invuln save is nice. The Terminators, I, I like Terminators. Definitely the new sculpt on the Infernal Master, Hotness. The Shaman is, they, they added another model in. Sure, I guess. That's, that's great. Um, as a quick thing, I'm just going to pop open my GW app real quick. It's 430 points, no upgrade, just flat as it is. Um, you're, you're probably going to like upgrade those Terminators, right? One of them gets the Hellfire Missile Rack. Definitely give one of them the Soul Reaper Cannon. Soul Reaper Cannon, there it is. I pay a little bit extra for that. So you're at about 450 points of Thousand Suns, which is pretty solid actually. It's like just shy of 500. That is a pretty solid start to to an army. I am going to guess that the Garay Knights are roughly about the same. Um, th this is essentially like you're buying two get started boxes, plus getting the little extra narrative fluff and stuff like that. So there you go, people. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of content. Uh, I am going to continue talking about Thousand Suns because, like I said, this this is my army since third edition. I've played it. I had an entire army. I, I wasn't faithful to Magnus. I, I sold that third edition army. Then when they got re-released, I rebuilt the entire army with all new models. I have a single classic model in my army as a kind of a throwback, which will will pop in later on. But... Thanks everyone for checking this out. Stay tuned, hit some like and subscribe. If you want to see more stuff about the Thousand Suns, definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to go over the codex. I'm going to talk about the uh, boxes. We'll talk about the cards and the dice. And finally, we'll pop open the 3.5 classic codex and we're going to compare where the Thousand Suns came from back in 3rd edition to where they are today in ninth. So thank you, everyone. Peace out. Have a great day.